The Lord is good. The Lord is good. We thank God for giving us an opportunity this morning so that we can be able to go back to the Word and see what He has for us this morning. Welcome once again our online worshipers and those who are in our physical attendance. May God keep you, may God help you, may God shine his face upon you, that you can be able to receive blessings, immensely bless you. I know Paul is writing unto us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20, where he says, He who is able to bless you and keep you and give you abundance, abundantly, exceedingly, and that's what we want this morning, that God can be able to give us whatever he wants in abundance. Now I welcome you once again to our morning devotion. Uh, just a reminder that this week we have a theme on, on our morning devotion that is saying, let God be God. Once again, I'm back with this theme. We want to see and know and at least get to understand when I'm saying that let God be God. Yesterday we ended on by saying that even if it is death, you still want to maintain it and say, I will be faithful, I will stand with God, even when it seems that he's silent, that God is never silent, that God is speaking visibly, it's only that he has given us time to open our eyes and think in the word and be able to give the world what it needs. So this morning, once again, we are here. And before we go to, to read that word, may we pray, our heavenly Father, our God who reigns from the ancient to now and to eternity. We pray that God, you can be able to speak to us this morning. We are still maintaining this theme that God, let God be God. This morning, may you speak to us in a powerful way that you see it is better for us. In the stillness of your voice, may we hear it and answer it according to your will. We pray and trust in Jesus' name. I, I, I want to start by saying this. That many times when we are facing adversity, we ask ourselves so many questions. And we, we, we want to wonder and ask, is God really hearing my prayer? Is God answering me? Is he walking with me? And one thing that comes to my mind, that at times when we have been crushed and we feel that we are in despair, that there is a time we don't worship God in a right way. But it, it means that sometimes we disconnect. But here this morning, I'm here to let you know that do not disconnect from God. Remain holding on because him, he will never stay away from you unless you stay away from him. Him, he will remain to be God. Him, he will remain with the mightiness that he wants to, uh, to, to be able to, for you to see in his life. And that's why sometimes I sit back and in my, in my mind and see the mighty works of Jesus Christ in my life. Then when I look around and see that people can doubt God and ask, is God really answering? Is God really hearing? Is there with us? And I may I remind you this, that even in silence, God speaks the loudest. So this morning, I want us to uh, turn our eyes to the story of Elijah. Elijah was a man of God. And Elijah has been caught up in a situation whereby he must be able to tell us whether this God is worshiping, he, him is worshiping. Is he the true God of Israelites? Is he the, the true God who can answer even when other people are doubting? Can you still hold on? And, and Elijah was given a word from God in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, but I'll go to uh, chapter 18. But quickly in chapter 17, Elijah is given a prophecy from God and he, 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 and he say, and the word says that there will be no rain for three and a half years. And people suffered and people had issues. People were not able to get food. Then quickly the story changes when God is coming in to let people know that when he's given an opportunity, even in the worst adversity, him he will be able to stand and let people know that now this is the one who is supposed to be worshipped. Now, Elijah, he faces King Ahab. And this is what uh, the Bible says from chapter 18, verse 17. It says, And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? When he was able to see Elijah, he's like, this man, you have given us trouble enough. You have set us on fire, and there is no way we are going to get it out. He did not know that the Lord was answering, was, 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 
was able to take these people to the uh, to their decisions that they had made. Once you disobey God, there must be consequences. Now, the people, Amma, the Israelites, they were facing their consequences of disobedience. And when they did not have rain for three and a half years, it was because of their what? Their disobedience. Now, when you saw Elijah, he's, he's complaining. But Elijah answers this, and he answered, I have no trouble, Israel, but thou and their father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baal. You see, the problem of the Israelites at this time, they were worshipping gods. Gods. I know from our Bible study, we had differentiated yesterday the, the difference between the small g God and the, the true God that we serve. So he was telling Ahab, it is not me, but you people have turned your back against who? Against the true God. And you are worshipping other gods. And now you are facing the consequences. When this man had like this, then Elijah, when he looked to, the, to King Ahab, he said, now, let's have a challenge. Let's see which God is supposed to be worshipped. Who is supposed to be given the reverence? Who is supposed to be given that power? Who is supposed to be worshipped in reverence and say that now, when he stands, no one can be able to stand against this, uh, this God. And what's that one? Then Elijah came up and said this. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long hath thou yell, uh, ha, had ye bil, uh, uh, how long hath ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, uh, and, and if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered not a word. Why? They knew what they were doing. They knew they have been serving God. They have been serving Baal. And now Elijah is coming to them and saying, if you know that the Lord is God, if you have been letting him to be in your situations, serve him. And we want to see what he can do. But if Baal is, then continue. Then these people, they kept quiet. Then he said, now let's do this. These people, we are going to divide ourselves. We have the true God of, of wisdom who is supposed to be served. And we have Baal. And, and there, were, uh, there were prophets of Baal, and there were uh, prophets of Asher. These people, in, uh, in total, they were 950. But when they came here, they wanted to, uh, to be able to confront who? Elijah with his God. Then Elijah said, now let's do this. Let's have two blocks brought here. You cut one, you dress it on your altar, and do not put fire on it. I'll also cut one and put it on, my, uh, on the altar, and I'm not going to put what? Fire on it. Then we are going to pray. Verse 24 says, And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. If you see that, uh, that, that word Lord is written in capital L-O-R-D, that one was a unique way of addressing the mightiness of God. In fact, in the, in the Hebrew canon, it was written Y-W-H-W. -W. It, it does not have a, 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 the vowels. It is just consonants, meaning they were unable to pronounce the word. And even when they were writing the Bible, those who were writing the Bible, when they got to get this word, then they will go wash themselves well, come, write the, 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 the letter Y. They go again. They consecrate themselves once again. They come and read the next one. Meaning, it was that mightiness, and they were saying it was holy. It was not supposed to be what? To be even uttered. So, he's saying, you people, if you know that you are serving your God, go and offer your sacrifices to what? To your God. But me, I will call the name of the Lord, and the God that answered it by fire. Mm -hmm. Let him be what? Be God. And the people answered and said, yeah, yes, well spoken. Now we are able to take the challenge. You know, sometimes <laughs> I wonder, when Satan has taken a seat in your life, you can even cheer on something you are not even sure what is going to happen. You are not even sure of their consequences. They were cheering because in the past they have seen what their gods have done. But they had not experienced the power of the, of the, of the God of Elijah. Then the sacrifices were given. I love what is happening in verse 26. And they took the block which was given to them, they dressed it, and they called on the name of who? Baal. From morning 
even until noon. Where was this God? Where was he hiding? They have been calling him morning. It is now noon. They are still calling on the name of who? On, of Baal, saying, O oh Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. You see, they were very joyous. They were now, let us show you that our, our God is able to work this miracle out. When they sat there, they started praying. They started crying to their God. They cried. They cried. It was morning. Time was going. It was midday. It was, now every other person was like, what is happening? They ripped up here and there around the altar, calling the name of the one of their God. And it came to pass at noon. Then Elijah mocked them. <laughs> you know, when God is in your heart, you do not fear. Hallelujah. You do not fear. Elijah came in and mocked them and said, cry loud. Why? Perhaps for he is a God. For he is a God. Elijah knew what he's talking. He's saying, cry. Even if you cry, he's what? He's just a God. He's not someone who is going to be able to answer this thing. Neither he is talking or he's pursuing or he's on a journey. Is God who can be able to forget. That's what I can be able to say. That this, this, this God that you are praying unto, he can be able to forget. Maybe he was traveling and now he has forgotten you were offering a sacrifice. Mm -mm. Then he says, oh, paradventure, he sleepeth. <laughs> he sleepeth. A God who sleepeth. A God who slumbers. Is that, one? Is, that, is that a God who can be asked anything? And he must be awakened. The, he, Elijah is telling them, you people, see, look here. If, you are, if your God has traveled, he's on a journey, maybe he's relaxing somewhere, he's sitting, maybe he's taking tea. This man, maybe he's, or he's, he's, he's having his dinner or something of that. But one thing that makes me to be able to love what, what Elijah said, paradventure, this man, this God is sleeping. A God who sleepeth. Our God that we let into our situation, he does not, he does not. Then he says that maybe this God must be awakened for him to be able to know that there is something that is happening. If you are calling or you are going for help for, to somebody and this somebody is not like answering, then you are on a wrong way. But they cried aloud and caught themselves after the, uh, their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out. The, the issue here is when, when Elijah is coming unto them, he's asking them, if you, are, if you are God, must be awakened for him to be able to know that he, there is a mission that is supposed to be done. Then you cry aloud. Make sure that you tell him what is supposed to be, uh, to be, uh, he's supposed to, be, to, to, to hear. Then make him to be able to, uh, to be awake to answer your prayer. You see, <laughs> they cried until time was not there. But let me come back and remind you this. That our God is God. Our Lord is God. And he says, when, he says in the book of Jeremiah, 33 verse 1, verse 3, he said that, call unto me and I will answer and show you great things that you do not know about. Hallelujah. When you call unto God, our God has answers, even the things that we do not understand. When he answers, every other person around us can be able to experience that this one is not an answer from the human being. Then Elijah uh, went forward and said unto, the, uh, unto all the people, come near. Now, if you are God, went, to, to, went for a journey, he is sleeping, he has not been awakened. Now, come, 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 come near. Let us experience the power here. Then he brought the people near, they came near to him, and he repaired, he repaired the altar that was, that was ruined, the altar that was supposed to be used for the power of God. And he repaired the altar. He called every other person there. Then he dressed the, the, uh, the pullock. He put it, he put it on, 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 the, on, the, on the altar. Then verse 36 says, says this. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Remember in our Bible study yesterday, we were told in the, in the Old Testament, God was a person of God, was a person of being. That if it was, it was Jacob, it was God of who? God of Jacob. Now, he's referring to that God of Abraham, the one who answered in the bush. He, he's, he's, he's calling the, the God of who? The God of Jacob, who traveled with him far and wide and brought him back. And he's saying, and the Lord of Israel, 
let it be known this day that thou art God of Israel. Hallelujah. Let it be known, even if you are going to answer this prayer in any other way, but let every other person know that you are the God to be worshipped and you are the God of the Israelites. Hallelujah. Then God, then God, and, and, and that I may, and I am thy servant, that I have done all the things at thy word. So whatever Elijah was doing, it was not his own making, it was the making of the Lord himself. Then he said, hear me, O Lord, hear me, O Lord, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then, then <laughs> the fire of the Lord fell and consumed everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when these people, they were dressing their bullock and doing their things, they prayed, they leaped all around, they cried, they, they were able to cut themselves, even blood was able to be out of their bodies, but their God did not answer. But with the time Elijah came to be able to dress his, his, his sacrifice, he even told them, if you go back to the, uh, in verse 35, 32 and 33, he said that he even told them, when you have, I have dressed this, this sacrifice, but even bring water, pour on this what? On this sacrifice. But I'm told when he prayed, the fire came from heaven and fell on the, on the sacrifice. It consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, haha, and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Hallelujah. When he comes, he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. And that's why in our own, in our own, in our, in our own saying, we can say that Yahweh, you are might. But because the Hebrew people were writing the Hebrew canon, they were not able to speak. They say that, Lord, you are God. When you are given a situation, you never let down your people. You come and you stand. And the people, they will experience the mightiness of Jesus Christ. This is the same God I'm bringing to you, brothers and sisters. Which situation do you feel is too hard for God to be able to come in? He's able to come. And when he comes, <laughs> even those people who are doubting, they will be able to see. Because he came, he consumed the sacrifice, not only the sacrifice, the woods, the stones, for God's sake, the dust, and even lick the water. The water's meaning he was able to consume. Why? When you ponder on the mightiness of Jesus Christ, when he comes to your life, he will resolve your problem, not only what you are going through, even what you do not know. Hello? Even what you what you do not know. And when he was given that opportunity, God came out. And when all the people saw, they fell their faces down. Hallelujah. They were able to know that now this one is not a normal thing. And they said, the Lord, now they have shifted from their little gods. They have shifted from their small gods. And they are saying, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Hallelujah. I love that God. I love that God. Because when he comes, every other person must be able to do what? To feel the power. They are saying now, let our, our gods be. Let them be burned. Because if he was sleeping, he was not able to, uh, to be able to be awake, to be able to uh, attend to us. Now we have shifted our focus to who? The God, the one who reigns forever and ever. Hallelujah. And that's why the, the psalmist is saying that our God, let me read that one. The psalmist is saying the psalm in the uh, Psalm 121. He says, I will lift up mine eyes, 121 Psalm, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence come my, cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, still the capital Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth, meaning every other thing that is happening here on earth, it is seen and is visible before God. And he says, I will, he will not suffer thy foot be moved, that he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Hallelujah. But behold, he that keepeth his life, he, he shall neither slumber or asleep. If you think you are calling on God and you feel that he is sleeping, he does not do that. Our God is awake 
24 hours a day, maybe 365 years in, uh, days in a year, is right there with you every moment, every second. As it tickles, God knows what is next in your life. So when you call on the name of the Lord, he will come and be sufficient in your situation. Hallelujah. He'd be able to do something. And when these people, they were able to see that, they all were terrified. And one thing that makes me happy, they knew that this God of Elijah, who has been led to this uh, situation, is not going to be washed even when you are standing. They fell on their faces. They worshiped this God. My friends, this morning, we are going home. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are going home. The fact is, whether you are in trouble or not, whether you have been worshipping the gods or you have been worshipping the Lord, we are going home. It is not far from home. But the only thing that is needed before we get home, that we turn our hearts to our Lord Jesus Christ. One thing that makes me happy, our, our Jesus says, Father, for those that you have given unto my hands, I will make sure that I give them unto you. Hallelujah. So which side are you standing? Are you with the bars? Are you with the Lord God in heaven? Because our God does not want. He will keep your feet. He does not slumber. Neither does he go for a leave. He does not take a leave and say, now, maybe I am taking my dinner. Our God is ever present. His mighty power can be felt even in the darkest part of your life. Hallelujah. This morning, my friends, <laughs> Test this God and see that he is good. Our God will never slumber, never sleep. He's looking, just is waiting for you to recognize and let him be God in your situation. And once you've given him an opportunity, you'll be able to stand up and make sure that every other person around you can be able to feel that this one, uh, 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 this one is the mighty God. This one is Jehovah. And that's why many times we sing and say, he is our Ebenezer. Why? Sometimes you are unable to walk, but when you have allowed God to be God in any situation in your life, you find yourself today here worshiping and you say, it is true that you are Ebenezer. Our God who does not sleep. Our God who does not slumber. May I tell you that, friends, may we look to Jesus in every situation. When you are found in, in, in between the rock and the hard place, please, let's honor a little bit and let Jesus be Jesus. Let God be God. He will turn the situations around and every other person will be able to be able to say that now, this is the God to be what? to be worshipped. I find it so we, we, sometimes we are daring and we tell God, now you know if this is Nairobi, we have to go up and about and do our works. Give God an opportunity to order your steps. Give God an opportunity to make sure he's ordering your family. Give God an opportunity to order your job. Give God an opportunity to order your children. What about our husbands and wife? Give God an opportunity to do that and he will mightily do that you are going to be blessed beyond borders because I will tell you that if you ask God he will bless you and when it comes to your life mm -hmm, he will lick everything out of your life he, he, any impurity is going to wash them give them out, uh, get them out of your life give you a way and be able to enjoy in Jesus Christ I'm inviting the choristers we are going home our song 439 we are going home. I've been asking around, is there someone who is going home? Who is upward? Who is, who, whose mind is upward? Who is saying that now I am tired of this journey, but I want to go home. Time is tickling. Soon we are going home. But before we go home, let God be God in your situations. Let him stand to be your hero. Hallelujah. Let him be able to be able to order everything in your life. Then when we are almost, we are almost there, he'll be able to welcome us because every other impurity, every other thing has been taken away. I want to welcome you. If you have a prayer request, write on our prayer, uh, prayer boxes, this one and the other one. As we sing this song prayerfully on our feet, then we can be able to go on our knees as we pray. Our chorus is welcome.